have returned to Graceland for Elvis week. We're gonna see Elvis's Piano Man. This should be fun, Glenn Harden. Days with Jordan the Lion begins right now. But before we go in, I wanna show you something very extra special they have going on right now. I'm passing the oversized guitar pick and into the Private Presley exhibit. As you walk through the archives of Elvis's belongings, including the TV with a bullet hole through it, you have when he met Nixon. They have the suit and the badge that he got. He loved the badges. He loved collecting badges and he got one from Nixon. Look at that. He even wore that famous <laughs> world championship belt on there. I love it. Tunic pants by Bill Ballou, who did most of his costuming. And the gold belt was a gift from the International in Las Vegas. I remember when they said, Elvis, you're supposedly very humble. And he stands up and shows off that belt and goes, oh, I don't know, what do you mean humble? <laughs> Look at that, man, that's so cool. And then a black velvet coat. And he even wrote Nixon a letter on some stationery from the airplane. And I'll show you the letter they actually have it here. First they have a pair of cufflinks and pendant that Nixon gifted to Elvis when he came. And of course Elvis tried to bring his guns in. And I don't see it on display, so they must have loaned it out for something, but here's where they were talking about it. Confiscated his 45. He had brought it with himself as a gift for Nixon. They escorted Elvis without his entourage to meet Nixon. When he first walked into the Oval Office, he seemed a little awestruck, but he quickly warmed the situation. Holly Atkins snapped photographs. The President and Elvis shook hands, and Elvis showed off the police badges he had. I'm on your side, Elvis told Nixon, and he asked the President for a badge from the Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs. Nixon said, can we get him a badge? So. Elvis was ecstatic. In a surprising, spontaneous gesture, Elvis put his left arm around the president and hugged him. How cool is that? What a wacky moment in history. So there it is, the badge. After attempting over a year to get this badge, it was Nixon who gave it to Elvis. Elvis felt that with his influence and his badge, he could make a difference. Elvis wrote to Nixon. Under the name of Johnson. All on American Airlines. Stationary. Shaq says that it's, it was cash at the Beverly Hills Hotel. It was the only money that Elvis and Jerry had with them when they boarded the plane to Washington. Elvis signed it, but the check was filled out by his driver, Gerald Peters. Then ironically, the very day that the Tiger Man Karate Dojo was opening, they started this exhibit here, showcasing his more of his karate history. There's his eight degree belt. the back of it and there's one of his geese and that black one as well and then that's his eighth degree belt here they've got some of his patches his high karate cologne <laughs> his karate certificate for his second degree and numerous checks and then he was working on, he wanted to do a movie that he was filming in the dojo called New Gladiators and there's a handwritten script for it. It was a documentary he was doing. That's Elvis's handwriting. Then here they have his karate certificates, seventh degree, and then kangaroo. And there's his eighth degree. And Ginger says in her book that 
he gave her one of these, one of his certificates before he passed. I believe she left it in Graceland. Didn't take it with her her last trip there, if I remember right. And then if you notice down here, the witness for him getting his promotion in the belts was Dave Hebler. This and the Nixon exhibit is just fantastic. Big ups to Graceland for doing this. I love this. I mean, you can never have too much Elvis material out there. Too many Elvis exhibits. Very cool. <laughs> Personal outfit worn by Elvis. And here's another one of his geese. And one of his black geese. And one of his belts. Pretty cool. We were just wondering what's up with his hand. Hmm? What happened? Oh my god, is that Elvis? He just noticed that lady over there is wearing his belt and he's gonna go have a talk with her, he said. And there's Norbert Putman's bass. I think he said 120 Elvis songs he played on with that bass. They just added this here. And they're already preparing for a big Christmas show. If I'm not mistaken, you correct me if I'm wrong, you were a violinist. That's correct. Very few people know that, and I don't know why. Uh, the thing is, uh, I only took up piano because my drink kept falling off my violin. <laughs> you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Well, I first saw you 
your smile so tender My heart was captured My soul surrendered I spent a lifetime Waiting for the right time This is one of his particular favorites. He loves to play this song right here. You take off on it. Your sleeping son, but really this can't wait. I wanted to explain. Before it gets too late And for those of you that don't know, Glenn's the one that did the musical arrangements during this time for Elvis, so he did most of the arrangements for these. You know how I know? Just watch this. Watch this. You ready? Are you ready? talked to Ronnie recently, I have too. How's, how's he doing? Uh, I talked to him yesterday. I yeah. know everybody's going to ask about him. They always do. I'm happy to tell you that he's doing really well. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. He's, not, he's not quite through with physical therapy, but it's working very well. And it won't be long until it'll be perfect. <laughs> John Denver. Nostalgia's sake for Glenn D. If you don't mind, we're going to play a John Denver song. Is that okay? With that? Absolutely. I bet he knows this one. I bet he's played this one lots and lots of times. Sunshine on my shoulders, 
makes me happy. Sunshine almost always makes me high. And if I had a day that I could give. This song is from the Nashville Marathon, and we did not get around to doing Just Pretend the other night. Oh. Just pretend I'm holding you and whispering things They had a big hit with a song called uh, This Diamond Ring, doesn't she? 
And then, right behind that, Glenn D. Hart wrote this song all by himself and gave it to him. Can we play that for you? Because Glenn never gets to do this song these days. And I thought, let's just, let's try this song. You ready? You ready? Okay. Right. Can we rehearse it right in front of you? Thank you. 